why do you think a lot of relationships aren't working out today? Yeah. Specifically to our culture and society, is it because people are choosing wrong? Is it because they're getting into a relationship at the wrong time? Is it because they're not clear on the tools on how to have healthy relationships yeah. and intimacy? What do you think is wrong with relationships today? So um, first off, I wanna say that relationships are how we were, I believe, designed to interact with each other in this life. So for everybody that's listening and watching be like, that's why I don't do no relationships. I don't want no relationships. Like you're missing out on, I believe, what is the fabric, the most valuable connection you could have is authentic, real, life-giving relationship with somebody else. So, so for everybody that's been hurt, I just feel to start there, to everybody who's been burned and wounded and all that other stuff, I do believe that this is how God intended for it to be, us to be in relationship. But the reason to answer your question, why I think it's so hard and it doesn't seem like a lot of people are um, doing well in relationship is because of three reasons. Number one, I don't think that they're bringing their full self to the relationship. Mm. I think many times when people start in relationship, they, they, they really give versions of themselves. And, and I understand it to a degree, but some people have been married for 10 years and still they've never met who they really are married to. Ooh. Some people have been in business with people for years and they've never really met their business partner. Right. They're getting these versions of them that are triggered by number two, their trauma. Mm -hmm. so, 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 so the version I present of you is not really who I am. It's who I am after I was in the relationship with the last guy. Nah. It's after I'm in the relationship with the last business partner. So when I come, I don't come with fresh trust. I don't come with fresh expectation. I don't come assuming the best. I come to you like, maybe you won't hurt me like the other person did. So I'm gonna give you this much because I never want to actually feel that again. Wow. And you can never really love unless hurt is an option. Wait, say that one more time. You can never really love is being hurt is not an option. Interesting. And a lot of people are trying to mitigate the hurt so they also mitigate the amount of love they can feel. Interesting. And at the level that you are vulnerable, it's the level that you can actually experience the love, the acceptance, the joy that you really want in a marriage. And so I always ask people, I was like, wh who are you bringing to this relationship? Are you bringing the broken, battered, wounded, jacked up, pessimistic version of yourself to this? Are you actually saying, you know what? I need to start over. This is a brand new person. I need to maybe not even be in a relationship right now so I can go heal. And that's my burden of even this book and some of the things that I'm talking about. I really feel like the quality of our life would increase if we would allow the quality of our healing to increase. Mm -hmm. And most people don't want to take the time to heal. I mean, you used to play yeah, ball. Man. Like, think about it. Every contact sport has an off season. Mm -hmm. And the primary reason for an off season is what? Healing. Healing. I've been getting hit. I've been running. I've been lifting weights. I've been ripping and tearing and all the different things. And so I need a season so that I can become the version of me that I know I can be up here. But my body, my emotions, my will needs time to become that in here. Yes. And a lot of people are jumping from relationship to relationship, business entrepreneurship to business entrepreneurship partner. They're going from this to that. And I, I, I'm scared that many people aren't reaching their greatest purpose or their greatest height because they have not taken the time to actually heal. Mm -hmm. And so that would be the answer to my question, to your question holistically. I think people aren't doing good in relationships is because they're not tending to themselves. Right, they're not tending. So you said not bringing the full self to the yes. other person, whether yes. it's intimacy, whether it's friendship or business. They're allowing their traumas to guard them or hold yes. them back as well because they're not allowing themselves to recover or heal. What would be the third thing did you say? I, I would say that the third thing of this, and now my mind, you got my mind going a thousand <laughs> places. Now I'm ready to start relationship goals yeah. part two. But the third thing would be that they do not give, they don't tend to themselves. Yeah, they don't tend to themselves. Yeah. So, so what ends up happening is um, I'm a person of faith. And so um, the Bible says that you can only love your neighbor at the level that you love yourself. Mm. So if you have a level two out of 10 of self-love. You only can give 
at maximum a two. Wow. And, and, and a lot of times you don't give nobody else the maximum. Right. So, so, so again, if you can't deal with you, if you can't look at yourself in the mirror, if you can't forgive yourself, if you can't say we failed the back there, but there's still greatness in the inside of you. If you can't do that to yourself, it's very difficult to love somebody else at that level. And that's where I think a lot of times our relationships are really a reflection. Mm. The reason it's not working is because you can't divorce you, Ooh. but you can let go of them. Ooh. And you don't like what you're getting from you, but you can not like what you're getting from them and try it again. Wow. And so I think that sometimes I'm talking heavy right now, Lewis, but Brilliant. what I am saying is I feel like some people need to take time to reflect and remember, to, to, to retool and then renew. And I think that's how out of that, your relationships will be so much more vibrant. They will be so much more intentional as well as you'll get to experience the fruitfulness and the joy out of those relationships because you've done enough work on you yeah. to know what you're actually looking for. This idea of healing is something that I've really loved over my last decade, but specifically over the last two and a half years, I've dived deeper into internal and spiritual healing. Yes, sir. And it has created a level of peace and an internal environment of harmony that I've never experienced in my life. Yes, sir. That give, allows me to see clearly, or at least more clearly, right? Yeah. Of who's in front of me, what I want. It just gives me more awareness. But I remember many years, if not decades, feeling very anxious when a relationship wasn't working out, going through a breakup, and feeling like, I got to get back on, you know, my relationship game quickly mm. and never really taking the time to heal because it was really scary. Yeah. It was really scary to face the trauma or the shame or the whatever it was I was holding on to. It was scary. And all I wanted was intimacy and connection with someone else. Yeah. I didn't want to be alone. Yes. I don't know if anyone can relate to this. Everybody can relate to that. Everybody. So can. for those who are like, you know what? But it's just, it feels, I feel so alone. I feel so scared. This trauma, I don't even want to think about it because it's so dark yeah. or it's so hard for me to focus on. What do you say to people that are really struggling, that really want love, yeah. really want intimacy and connection and just deep com compassion with someone else, yeah. but they're afraid to do the healing work because the trauma is so scary? So uh, uh, I would say to you, um, because I know there's thousands of people watching this that feel that exact same thing. You need to examine the pattern. Man, that's so true. Because if this is a pattern of you continually getting hurt because you do not heal, then it might be better for you long term to do the work to heal so that you can cut the cycle. Yes. I think about um, um, rest in heaven, Kobe Bryant, when he when he um, tore his Achilles and he said he could come back and play before he was fully healed. Uh. He, he, he was ready. I mean, and he would have probably been better than nine out of 10 people on the floor. He could have fooled everybody, but he knew he wasn't his 100%. He wasn't his best. He was not his best. So if it came down to the last minute when he really needed to be his best, he wouldn't have what he needed to have. So they took the time for him to actually heal. What I'm saying is you may be fooling everybody, you may, your Instagram is popping, your business is successful, you got the bag and the body and you got all the different things, but you know deep down in your, your soul, your mind, will, and emotions, you know you're still hurting. Ooh. And so what ends up happening is you come in limping to love. You limp into love. Wow. Instead of leaping into love. Right. You should be able to go a lot higher, but because you're still aware of the thing that you need to be healed you don't go and so what i'm saying is if this is a pattern if this is if this been the same it was john and then it was joey and then it was julio then it was jaquan and then it was jared like if it if it's the same thing you might want to step back and get a new perspective because the pattern is the same mm -hmm. and a season of discipline can produce a lifetime of freedom come on and that's where I just, my encouragement, I've counseled too many people, I've been around too many people, I've helped so many people get through this hump in their life. And, and what they realize is what they're scared of, they need the most. 
that intentional time with themselves, that intentional time with God, that intentional time with community, that intentional time in counseling. They need that because if you discover you, if you find out who you were made to be and walk in your purpose and get confident in that thing, then you actually will attract what you really want to love. Mm -hmm. And most people are attracting to their insecurities. Ooh, man, that's true. You're attracting based on your trauma, not on the healed version of you. Right. And so you're looking for somebody to play savior and they can't. They, they've never been able to have that ability in this life. And so I would just encourage those people. I know it's hard. I know it's frustrating. I know you probably even tried before. Mm. But as someone who can identify with you, like as someone who did not want to face their trauma, did not want to talk about the bad stuff that happened, did not want to even block stuff out. Like, like, no, like I'm, I'm not going there. Like the journey that I've gone on to actually take everything that has damaged me and say, you know what? I may be damaged, but I'm not destroyed. This thing that was trauma, it actually can be fuel to make me triumph. I learned that the value was still in me. And then once I learned the value was in me, then I could give and add value to other people. Mm. And so I'm telling you, it may be hard, but it's going to be worth it.